Hey, this is Shiraz. And before we get started, I just want to let you know that when I clear something for someone, when I cause a shift, I tend to yawn and cough from the energetic shift that happens. I don't know why it happens. It's just how my body works. And if you don't know that, you're going to listen to this video and go, what the hell is wrong with this guy? You might still think that, but now there's more of an explanation. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you hear something that you can absolutely relate to, when I cleared for them, you can get it cleared for you too. Just say yes when they're saying yes, and it works. It's, I have people that watch these videos every morning to get stuff cleared. This can be your new morning habit too. Okay, that's enough for that. Let's get on with the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a great shift out of it. See you soon. My issue is I've, um, I've been a graphic designer for 25 years, went into web design about 10 years ago. I've always done freelance on the side and um, I lost my job last fall um, working for a company and, um, and I'm okay with that, but I, I'm wondering if maybe I should veer into something else. I've started making uh, wire wrapping jewelry. I've always been artistic. I like uh, more of a hands-on and I find the computer part of it makes me a perfectionist and I'm very hard on myself, so I wouldn't mind getting more into um, the old fashioned painting, um, creating, making jewelry. So I'm wondering if I just start making my own things. I'm not really great for working for the man. I always okay. liked to um, set my own hours, things like that. Um, but I'm scared to start my own business and don't really know where to begin. I've created all kinds of, of jewelry pieces and I've got them here and now I just don't really know where, where to go with it. Of course, confidence is always, um, I've struggled with confidence a lot of my life. Um, I'm not a good salesperson. I'm not good with pounding the pavement to get out there for work. So a lot of my web design work, it's just stuff that comes to me on its own. Of course, I struggle with the stories of I, I hurt my arm about uh, 20 years ago at a job. I, so I have a pinched on my nerve. So sometimes I can't work too many hours on the computer. I never made a whole lot of my life. Okay. I'm hearing it now in my head. I don't really want to do that anymore. I want to. You know, I'm 50 years old now, and I, I'm, I'm tired of, of living that story of struggling. Okay. So when you say you're, you're afraid of starting a business, what are you afraid of specifically? I don't know where to begin. I make okay. the product. I'm get my, my product out there, which I haven't looked at Etsy, and, but I never really followed up. I've dabbled in things, but never really, you know, bite into it and go after it, just touch things. Okay. If you were to really bite into it and go after it, how would things change? I guess, I guess it would feel scary because I don't know how to step into that. Yeah. So this, this is the, the problem is like, you're worried about what it's going to look like on the other side. So you just don't take the steps. Because there's lots of ways to do it. Etsy is a big way. I know someone that does a lot of artwork on Etsy and she's, she's doing really well. Uh, but then there's also just networking, like physically just get out there and network with people and get your, so they, they see your stuff. And then you're, you're, like, you're going to get way more clients that way if, if you've got people that know what you sell and can refer people to you. Right. Uh, plus there's all sorts of trade shows you can go to. There's lots of practical, physical ways you could do it. But you're, you're stuck in, well, what's it going to look like? So. And I guess there's always a huge fear of failure. I've, I've always had that in the back of my head, I guess. Okay. There's some failure. And this is the hard part is you have to be willing to fail. Yeah. And you have to be willing to fail over and over again. Mm -hmm. And most people aren't. Yeah. And when you fail, oftentimes you feel shame. Absolutely. Okay. But that's a learned behavior. For sure. Right? When, when you were learning to walk, you didn't feel shame every time you, you fell down. You're just like, ah, I fell down. Let me try again. Ah, I mean, and eventually you're walking and that was it. But then as you start to grow up, your parents taught you what shame feels like. So now you start to feel it when you fail. When you get out of the sense that failure is shame and, fa and you get into failure is just learning, mm -hmm. then you start to fail more and you enjoy it. There's um, Ty Cobb 
was was famous for stealing bases. And he had a 72% base stealing um, per, uh, record or percent or whatever. Like, you know. And so he was really good at stealing bases, but he still only made it 72% of the time. And he was one of the, like the, the most uh, well-paid baseball players. People would come out to games specifically for him to watch him try to steal bases. It was a big thing. Mm-hmm. Now, what most people don't realize is there was another guy that was playing baseball at the same time as Ty Cobb. And he had 98% base stealing record. <laughs> and you would say, well, why isn't everyone on watching this guy? He's got 98% versus the 72. He's way better than Ty Cobb. The difference was during one season, that guy made 50 attempts to steal a base. And he missed the one. So he had 98%. During that same season, Ty Cobb had over 300 attempts to steal the base, right? He put himself out there. He wasn't afraid to fail and he failed over and over. But because he wasn't afraid to, about people watching him fail, he knew that this was going to enhance his life. He got way more fans. He got way more money and he got way more success in general. And it came from the failure, not the successes. If you're only going to make a move when you know that you're going to succeed, you're not going to make that many moves and you're not going to have the success you want. So are you willing to step out of the story? You keep cutting out. Oh, okay. So if I keep cutting out, you don't want to hear what I have to say. <laughs> I have to say it again because I didn't hear it the first time. Okay. Did you hear the story though? Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, but I didn't hear anything before. Okay, so you didn't hear the story I told? Oh, I did hear the Thai pop. Yeah, I heard all that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the question now. Are you willing to step out of the story that failure is a bad thing? Yes. Okay, that's not moving yet. (laughs) Okay. So we got to go a little bit deeper here. Who, oh, wow. Who are you disappointing when you fail? Um, myself. Okay, that's not the only person. That's, that's, that's not completely true. Who else are you disappointing when you fail? I don't really know who else would be besides my mom. Your mom's in there. There's other, there's, it feels like a bunch of people from childhood. Mm-hmm. Were you, afraid, were you afraid of letting down your teachers? Um, maybe at times, where the hmm. teachers were so nice to me. Okay. So what happens is stuff that happened in childhood, you can still be running that programming, those stories, even if the people involved aren't around whether they're just not physically in your life, they passed away, whatever, you're still running the stories. So are you willing to step out of the story that whenever you fail, you're letting someone down? Yes, I want to. Okay, I want to is not a yes. (laughs) (laughs) See, it's funny that you talk about childhood and the word name really struck a chord with me. Um, with the work I've been doing over the last few years, shame has really come to light. Um, my mom was very young when she had me and my sister, and I think there's a lot of intergenerational trauma, shame that's been passed on to me and my sister. And even when I hear my mom say the word shame, it just gives me shivers because I hate that word. Okay. And I, and I know I have stuff from childhood. I had a, a biological father who left me before we were one. I never, ever knew him. His whole family left us. And then my adopted dad brought us in, loved us and everything. But then when other cousins came along, we were made to feel not the same. We, because we weren't blood. We were reminded many times that we weren't blood. So I do live with a lot of that. But that family isn't even in my life anymore. Okay. It's interesting, though, because since they treated that, you that way, are you enough? That strikes a chord. Mm-hmm. So that's what they taught you. Yeah. 
And that's just a lie. You are enough. Mm. So are you willing to step out of their story that you're not enough? Yes. Okay. Because a story like that is going to keep you from achieving a lot because you, you're going to keep thinking, I'm just not enough to achieve that. Absolutely. Okay. Are you willing to step out of the story that you never will be enough? Yes. Okay, how's that feel? Feels good, a little lighter. Okay. The more you step into the story that you are enough, the more you're going to be willing to do more, to take more chances, and to even fail. Because you're going to see, well, the failure isn't about me not being enough. It's just I did something in, a, in the wrong way. I just got to figure out the right way to do it. Okay. The other thing to remember is that it doesn't feel like it, but shame is a choice. You decide whether or not you want to feel shame from whatever happens. And when you realize that shame is a choice and you're choosing shame, you can start to choose a different emotion. So, are you willing to step out of the story that if you fail, you have to choose, you have to feel shame? Sorry, repeat that again. Are you willing to step out of the story that when you fail, you have to feel shame? Yes. <laughs> Imagine if, you know, you tried something, it didn't work. And all you, all you thought was, well, okay, that didn't work. And then you just tried something else. Like you didn't have to go through that emotional turmoil each time it didn't work. Like, oh, okay, that didn't work. Wouldn't that make life easier? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the thing is you can do this, right? When, when you realize what you've been doing and that you can change your behavior on that. With, with me, when things fail in my business, I'm, I'm just like, ah, oh, okay. And sometimes there is, I'm going to admit, there is that, oh my God, I can't believe that worked. But it doesn't last very long. I go through it for like a couple of minutes. I'm like, okay, come on, get out of it. Let's just figure it out. Because you're allowed to have those emotions. And sometimes they've been there for so long and they've been so deep, you can't come out of it right away. You're going to go through it. But if the amount of time you spend in guilt or shame keeps decreasing as you start to step into this new space, you're making progress, right? There were people, I know some people that used to, have, you know, their life sucked and then they just had bad weeks and then they had bad days and now they're down to bad hours and bad moments because some, it, it can be a journey as you go through this change. Sometimes it happens instantly. I've had people that come out of these workshops and there's a huge change immediately afterwards. But for most people, it is a process and a journey and you have to be willing to go through that process to get the results you want.
if you're just looking for the quick fix miracles and stuff, you're going to, you're going to be disappointed a lot. When you speak of that, it makes me, it reminds me that I, I, I have a hard time letting go. Mm -hmm. if, you know, something I've done, I've like tortured myself over and over reminding, you know, remembering, remember, you know, playing it over and over something embarrassing that I've said or done, or how could you be so stupid and said, you know, I'd really love to be able to just let go and just not let it bother me. Okay. Do you have to punish yourself for every mistake you make? I have to. <laughs> I have to. Do you have to? I don't know why I would, but I do. Yeah. And that's the thing. But this is, here's why you would, because that's what you were taught. Mm -hmm. You, you, when you're growing up, if you screw up, you get punished. And now that you're adult, since there's no one else to punish you, you just decide, well, I have to get punished, so I might as well do it myself. Right? But here's the thing. When you're growing up, you got punished because they were trying to instill values and morals in you. And so you got punished when you were doing the wrong things. Now, of course, it's coming from their idea of what the correct values and morals are. So that could have just screwed you up even more. But that was the point. As an adult, if you screw up, the failure itself is the punishment. You don't have to add punishment on top of that. You're already done. You're good. But it's those old habits that say, well, no, I screwed up. And now I also need punishment, even though you've, you've done the failure. So are you willing to step out of the story that whenever you screw up, you have to punish yourself? Yes, I am. <sighs> okay, how's that feel? It's much better. I appreciate you shedding the light on a few things here that I need to work on. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like. And if you had a shift of your own, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Also, check out the description for energetic magic events that you can attend every single month. Be well, be aware, and be magical.